All right, it's time to get after it. We are here with some important competitive games in CONCACAF for the U.S. men's national team. Thursday night, they will face Jamaica in Jerry's world. It is actually an extravaganza of games from CONCACAF, and I think we should all get pretty excited about it. So you have the two Nations League semifinals, you have the final and the third place game. This is all in North Texas. Down in Frisco, or is it up in Frisco, or is it east in Frisco? We have two really important one-off games, and that is going to be Canada versus Trinidad and Tobago, Costa Rica, and Honduras. It's part of a double header, man. If I was out there in Frisco, I wouldn't mind heading on down there and spending the day there on a Saturday, March the twenty-third. That's gonna be pretty. That's gonna be pretty legit. Is it twenty-third? Let's yes. Because these are huge games. Now I will say it is biggest for Canada because Canada was here. They were upset by Jamaica. Should be USA, Canada really in the semifinals of these nation leagues. It wasn't. Now, Canada has to maintain their status, right? Because they're still a good young team. And they don't want to fall off the bumper here after qualifying for the World Cup for the first time in whatever, 26 years. Uh, and making the Nations League final, being the one seed when they played this last time out. Canada has a very good team still. They should beat Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago would be over the moon if they were able to make uh, the Copa America because this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, right? We don't know what the Copa America is going to do moving forward. It was huge in 2016. It's certainly going to be immense and would be a game-changer for all four of those federations. Costa Rica is kind of coming down a bit. Honduras is coming up. Both want to be there, but... It really is Canada that has the most to lose. I want them to make it because I think they'll add so much to the Copa America. And I want Comebol to look at the Copa America and say, we've got to do this all the time. And the best chance to amplify that is if Canada's in the field. Is it would be, it'd be tremendous. It doesn't mean they're going to make it. I'm going to pick Canada and Honduras to make it through there. But big pressure for the Canadians. But I'm not here to talk about Canada and Trinidad and Tobago. Today on the Soccer OG, check out the Soccer OG podcast where you get all your podcasts, new episodes every week. We'll be talking about this. We'll be previewing and reviewing the USA Jamaica game. And like and subscribe us right here. Hit, smash that button. Smash that like button. Smash that subscribe button. And we will, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take you where you need to go. Because there's a lot of stuff out there. There's a lot of good stuff, certainly on YouTube. I'm just here trying to carve out a little space. For your listening and viewing pleasure, ironed my shirt. So uh, let's get into the U.S. team. I'll give you my projected 11 and uh, prediction in a little bit. But this is the overlying, and we're going to talk a little bit about Mexico, Panama as well. We're going to preview the whole thing as we just started there with the other games, the qualifiers, the one-off qualifiers for the Copa. This is the overarching theme for this U.S. team. It's not that... Some guys haven't been playing for their clubs. It's not the U.S. are trying to three-peat. The overarching theme uh, leading to a bigger theme, which is that the United States are hosting everything. Now, the Copa America, the World Cup. And hosting comes with privileges. And we've seen it in tournaments all over. When you host, you do very well. When the U.S. hosted the Copa America back in 2016, they made the semis. Semis would be great for the U.S. again. I think that's the minimum. Anything less would be viewed as a disappointment. So, different levels of disappointment. But semifinals is really where we got to get to. But hosting this, this Nations League will show us that we are going to beat everyone in our path. Certainly teams we're supposed to beat like Jamaica and without, uh, without question. And then teams that we're not supposed to beat in the Copa and in the World Cup. That's the plan, right? We have been given this gift at home with support and resources. And generally that pays a big, big advantage to teams. So we are expect that moving forward. So that's the, that is what's at stake starting with the Nations League, which will be here in Texas. Now, the overarching theme for this U.S. team, regardless of some of the issues we're going to break down here, and there are, there are a few, the overarching theme is that we have never seen a U.S. team playing like this, 
We've never seen three, four guys at the absolute top of the game of any American player. Christian Pulisic, I mean, it used to be we'd all sit there on social media waiting to post a goal he would score every month. And we're like, oh, Christian Pulisic, he's scoring goals all the time. It's The, the novelty is gone. You don't even get traffic because it's so commonplace. Christian Pulisic, four goals in four games, 20 goals for AC Milan, playing at an absolute consistent clip where at this point you expect him to score in every game. Weston McKinney, the same thing. One of the best midfielders in the Serie A, one of the best midfielders anyway, the way he's playing. And those two at the top of this list, absolute foundation stones of quality that we can't, we, there's nothing to compare it to. We love Clint Dempsey and Landon Donovan and Brian McBride and the goalkeepers back in the day, but no one has played like these two. And two big stars like that should take you a long way. Add to that Anthony Robinson. Maybe the in the discussion for best left back in the Premier League. Really? He's not the best. He's in the discussion. Add to that you have three Americans in the Champions League round of 16 collectively playing well. I know we don't have Sergio Dest in this game, but Malik Tillman, Ricardo Pepe, high, high level. Just add it to the pot. Falar and Balogun, I know he has struggles, but playing very well. Josh Sargent, who had to... Uh, uh, step away from this 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 matchup, this window, and we we predicted that we knew he was carrying a bit of an injury. I feel terrible for Josh, but he's got to get that, and now he can focus on helping Norwich get into the promotion playoffs and maybe get promoted. And hopefully he gets made whole. But the problem is for Josh is this level at the at the forward position is so good. He will get back in here. But, I mean, there's some good players that didn't get called in. Haji Wright got brought in. He scored one of the biggest goals for an American. FA Cup quarters going to Wembley for a Coventry side that hasn't been there in 40 years. Jordan Peefock's playing well. Brandon Vasquez is playing well. They can't get on this team. That's like five really good forwards. And we'll talk about the, the lineup and the pecking order, but it continues on. The depth pieces, Johnny Cardoso, uh, Luca Della Torre, who had to step aside. Uh, Yunus Musa, I don't know if I mentioned him. It wasn't playing a lot recently, but he's playing a lot now and doing well for Milan and is a mercurial talent. I mean, we're, <laughs> uh, Tim Weah not playing a lot, but we know what he can do. We've never seen anything like this. Never. It's, you stop and look at it. Just stop for a moment and go. It's unbelievable. And that is going to mean something in my estimation here. Because the USA are better than Jamaica. Jamaica's missing their best player, Leon Bailey. He's in the doghouse. So that should help when you look at this matchup. Any way you look at it, we can sit here and be nervous. We can sit here and say, well, you know, Mikael Antonio and Andre Blakes. No. Never seen a U.S. team this fully loaded. I think they should blow the doors off Jamaica. I can't believe I just said that. But if you want to do well in the Copa America, and if you want to do well at the World Cup, you got to take care of business against Jamaica. I, I know their manager, Hal Grimson, or uh, the Icelandic coach, kind of throwing something out there like the Jamaicans might have something and they're a good team. But if you want to do well, in the Copa, in the World Cup, you've got to be able to beat the fourth best team in CONCACAF at home. And I think, and I believe the U.S. will do that. It might get a little uncomfortable at times, but this team, whew, regardless of some of the questions that are going to come up, and we'll talk about them here, um, what we have seen and what I listed out should compensate for everything. Here is my starting 11. And the big question, and I didn't want to dwell too much on Gio Reyna, who I've said for the last few weeks should start this game. He's done well when he wasn't playing at Dortmund back in October. But I, I, this is a little different because now you can't expect him to come in and play well when he's not playing for his club. And who knows what's going on in these training sessions. So as much as I have said that Gio Reyna should start this game, I did a poll on my Twitter handle 
And my Twitter followers are generally pretty down the middle. They're not too extreme. 60% of them said that Gio Reyna should not start. And based on how badly this Nottingham Forest situation has gone, I will agree with them. And because you have a really good alternative in Malik Tillman, this is my starting love. And that's going to be the big surprise. Joe Scally will fill in for Sejuno Dest. Richards and Ream. I'm going to keep an eye on Tim Ream. I think he'll be good for the Nations League. But unfortunately, because of his age, uh, we'll see if he makes Copa. I don't think he's an option for the World Cup. You've got to find an alternative. Miles Robinson, don't shoot the messenger. It would be the replacement. Although I, I can't imagine Ream doesn't start this game. You don't bring him in here to be rah-rah at the camp. Reem Richards, Anthony Robinson, world-class left back. The midfield will be Musa, McKenney, and Tillman. I think McKenney gets a little more offensive, which he's done for Juventus, and gets a little bit more with ball on foot uh, in, in, re in replacing that production from uh, Gio Reyna, which I think he can produce. Now, if Gio Reyna's in the starting 11, I'm doing backflips because that means he has looked good in training and his fitness and his confidence is up. But Greg Berhalter, if he doesn't see the thresholds of fitness and confidence, he's not going to start him. It's that simple. I thought it was a slam dunk. I, Greg Berhalter even had a, we talked about what he said about it. It doesn't seem like he's all warm and cuddly about playing a guy, even though other guys haven't played a lot. But it's not a long list. We're going to deal with Matt Turner. Tim Ream's not playing a lot. Um, and maybe a couple other spots. Moose is kind of cross through that threshold. Tim Wea has played enough, and it's Tim Wea. Pulisic, Wea, Balogun. Balogun is going to start, and I believe he is here, and he swore his allegiance for the U.S. because he probably got some promises from the U.S. soccer. And we're not near that point where um, they're going to jeopardize that. Uh, Ricardo Pepe waiting in the wings, and Haji right now waiting in the wings. There are good options because Balogun scored, what, one goal in 10 games. It's not been great. But you're not going to put that in peril and, and have another player low on confidence. Now, time is we're starting to... The meter's running here on Flo, Flo Balogun, but it, you don't pull the hook here. So he's going to start, because I truly believe that that was an arrangement, and it's good. I think we all agree, we wanted Balogun. You do what it takes to bring him in here. You make him the starter for now. But the World Cup and Copa America shouldn't be guaranteed. He, he's uh, certainly in the spotlight here to get a goal, uh, especially if Ricardo Pepe, like he has in the past, comes off the bench and scores a goal. But that's it. And I don't want to dwell on, uh, on Gio Reyna too much because I'm confident in this team. I am confident in what this team is capable of doing to beat Jamaica and then move up against face, I think, which would be Mexico in the final. It's going to be a fun, fun week. So uh, I was going to say 3-1 USA. I'm going to say 2-1. I, I like Jamaica a lot. This is not a, a, this is not a, a, a situation. Against, this is not a test a, a against Jamaica. This is not a verdict against them. This is about how the USA look amazing, right? Go, everything coming in. No issues, no injuries flying in. And you got options and depth positions otherwise. I want to talk a little bit about Mexico, Panama. I like Panama a lot. Um, they deserve to be here. They have played well. They got a good team that's not too old. Edgar Bacenas, Coco Carasquilla. I like Ismael Diaz, Jose Fajardo. Um, when they've played Mexico, and they remember they played in the Gold Cup final, Mexico narrowly winning that. Me their last four games, it's been one set of Mexico, three games. Panama uh, tied the qualifier in Panama City ahead of the World Cup. But it's been very tight margins. So I like Panama a lot, but I like Mexico a lot more too than they were a year ago. They have guys doing better in Europe from a year ago. Obviously, we know about Santi Jimenez. Um, Luis Chavez, who made that move to Russia, doing well. Edson Alvarez, everyday starter at West Ham, my club. And the thing that I like about Mexico, and I know Liga MX is in Europe. But there are two teams in Mexico doing very well, Club América, Monterrey. And those clubs are all over this Mexican roster. You could play the Monterrey back four almost, almost, and start them here. And that's a strong group. Club América. Henry Martín is making a push to start 
at number nine. There is no Raul Jimenez, so it's going to be Martin or Jimenez or, or Santi Jimenez. No uh, Raul Jimenez. Uh, Julian Quinones in America has earned his spot here. And then you have the big question at some point for Mexico is when do you make the shift for goalkeeper? Jimmy Lozano has pushed all the right buttons. This is going to be a big decision for him. He's going to start Memo Ochoa against Panama. But Luis Malagón, uh, the America goalkeeper, has emerged as the next guy up. And I think he's going to get a run here soon because Memo Ochoa, as incredible he's been, you've got, <laughs> you've got to prepare to, with life without him. But that's it. Mexico has improved incredibly under uh, Jimmy Lozano and with certain players taking risks and moving and pushing forward. So I do believe it's going to be a Mexico-USA final. I can't wait. I know you can't wait. We'll be here after the game to recap everything that we saw. Check out the Soccer OG podcast where all podcasts are available. Like and subscribe us here, and we will see you very soon. And let's go USA. 2-1, 3-1.